The Eagles Cowboys rivalry basically goes back forever. This is my favorite rivalry in sports, hands down. I know some people have the Giants as their most hated team. There's nothing that compares for me to the Cowboys in terms of hatred, sports hatred. Eagles Cowboys is the ultimate rivalry in this city. Any sport, any time, that's the one. I remember back to that weasel Tom Landry on the sideline with his fedora, and he's Mr. Nice Guy, yet he's rubbing it in your face when he's up 35 points. People tend to forget that kind of stuff. I don't. I mean, there was uh, Leroy Jordan, who was middle linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, threw a very famous cheap shot elbow into the face of Timmy Brown and knocked out a whole bunch of Timmy's teeth, gave him a concussion. I remember the cheap shots, Dennis Thurman, who was one of the dirtiest players, laying out Harold Carmichael, breaking his streak. When I first got to Philadelphia back in the early 80s, I heard a lot about the Eagles and the Cowboys rivalry. I just didn't understand how big it was until my rookie season, coming out the tunnel, and you know, I'm looking around, as I always do, at Harold Carmichael, because to me, he was the guy in 82. And I'm looking up in his eyes, and he's, you know, you could see the tears welling up in his eyes, and. And right then I knew that there was something big about this rivalry and I needed to strap it on tight when it was time to play the Cowboys. January 11th, 1981, Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys at a jam-packed veteran stadium. I thought that the, the NFC Championship game was probably the best home field advantage I think I've ever seen for an NFL game. Uh, I don't think I've ever felt a stadium that was more electric. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a team that was more ready to play uh, than the Eagles were that day. I'm a little kid sitting in the stands freezing that day. I'm watching the game and I see the Eagles, they come out in their white jerseys. And if you remember back then, the Cowboys hated wearing the blue jersey. It was some kind of, it was in their head, okay? And Jim Murray, who was the general manager at the time, had the idea, put the Eagles in white, where they typically wear green at home, put the Cowboys in blue. Let's play with their heads a little bit. Now the odds makers made the Cowboys the favorites in that game, even though the game was in Philadelphia. And if you looked at it on paper and you matched them up player for player, it's fair to say the Cowboys were a better team. They had more talent. But on that day, walking into that stadium, you just felt they had no chance to win. Dick Vermeil talked to his team the night before and told them that he believed in them. And this game was going to be their game. This was the game that was going to launch them. And every man on that team believed. Let's face it, the Cowboys were the team that the Eagles, it just seemed like you couldn't get past them. And to have them now in an NFC Championship game to get to the ultimate game was just poetic. What Dick preached to his players, look, if we, for us to get to where we want to go as a football team, we have to beat the Dallas Cowboys. That's the team that stands in our way. Early in the game, they were pounding away at Tony Dorsett. But the big thing, the big moment of that game occurred in the first quarter. Wilbur Montgomery, who had been banged up that whole year. I mean, you look at the amount of touches he had that season. It's no wonder he was banged up. Is he going to play? Isn't he? The whole lead up. Jaworski, hands off inside, running with Montgomery up the right side. Left 30, 25, 40, 15, 10, touchdown! Wilbur Montgomery! Montgomery explodes on the right side, and the Eagles have scored first. If there's one play from that game that always comes to mind, and that will be the highlight that is forever shown. It will be that run by Wilbert Montgomery. Boom. I mean, off tackle, gone. The place erupts, and literally the game was over after Wilbert's run. And as I saw that number 31 disappear in the end zone, I knew, and everybody in the Delaware Valley knew, it was only the first quarter, but all of us knew that the Eagles were headed to Super Bowl 15. October 8th, 2006, it is the return of Terrell Owens as a Dallas Cowboy 
to the link. Terrell Owens, as a talk show host, I guess I don't have to tell anybody, but he was gold to us. That's one player who was so loved by Philadelphia fans, but he did so many things wrong to turn people off. Everybody is riled up, ready to give number 81 a very hard time. ESPN sent me into the parking lot across the street from Lincoln Financial Field just so we could soak up and feel the atmosphere. There were piles of number 81 Cowboys jerseys around the parking lot. And people were doing all kinds of things to those jerseys that I don't want to talk about on camera. You can just feel the electricity in this place. I know that the people behind the bench, uh, the Dallas Cowboy bench, just abused him. Bledsoe takes the snap. He's back. He's looking. He is going deep for Owens. And it is intercepted. It is intercepted, leaping up and coming down with the football is Lito Shepard. But the Eagles did a good job. They knew how to frustrate him, and they did. 32 seconds left. The Cowboys are out of timeouts. And the Cowboys, Cowboys are six yards away from tying the game. Bledsoe back. He looks, fires for the end zone. Intercepted, intercepted. Running with the football down the left sideline to the 50, it's 40, 30, 20. It's Lito Shepard raising the ball as he dives into the end zone. Lito Shepard goes 102 yards, interception, touchdown, pick six, farther than the length of the football field. Again, I was on the Eagles sideline, standing on the Eagles, near the Eagles bench, and then the PA announcer plays the Boz Skag song, Lido. Lido, whoa. And every time that song plays on the radio, I think of Lito Shepard, 102 yards, pick six. And then I turn the radio down and I start to sing it, and I can see him flying down the field, touchdown Eagles. <laughs>